and plans I had with my stepdaughter to spend time with my bio, my bio daughter? Possibly not. Seems like probably not. But they always write the title like, yeah, obviously. Hi, all. I've been part of my 12-year-old stepdaughter Abby's life for five years and been married to her mother for the last two. She is a lovely kid. We're very close. She sadly doesn't have any contact with her bio dad, but I've tried my best to be there and be supportive for her. Abby and I always do something on Fridays when she's finished school, clothes shopping, or go for ice cream, watch a movie. If it's warm, we go to the park and play football. This fucking dick. This asshole. <laughs> Bill Gates 1v1 me. Thank you for the gifted subscriptions. Thank you. <laughs> I appreciate it. I can't pass that challenge uh, along. I don't know how to reach his people, but I, I, I'm rooting. Well, I don't know if I'm rooting for you. I'm rooting for you right now, but I don't know. We'll, have you seen him? He can jump over a chair. However, I also have a bio daughter, Rachel. She is 23 and has always lived with my ex. Now, unfortunately, she got herself sent to prison. I won't go into detail, but it wasn't serious. She was only in there for six months. It's just a hit and run. The cops said it's like not a big deal. <laughs> The person she hit wasn't even like a real person, sort of. They weren't even supposed to be around in the area. <laughs> <clears throat> we were never very close, but we began writing to each other when she was in there, and I visited her a few times. I'm going to employ her at my business. Rachel was released in the morning. She headed straight to my ex's place, but called me, saying she'd like to see me in the evening. I didn't want to cancel plans with Abby, but it's important to be there for Rachel. I texted Abby my apologies. Rachel and I went for coffee and then did a bit of shopping. I got her a couple of new dresses and a new handbag. A handbag? <clears throat> I thought it was only fair to get her something nice after she was worn prison gear for six months. It was a good day, and next week we're going to start her application to my company. When I got home, my wife was in a complete rage. She said I let Abby down, and she was glad to know what my priorities are. Abby was crying in her room and told me to go away when I knocked on the door. I'm truly sorry for making Abby so upset, but what else could I have done? Rachel's my child, too, and she's just endured six months of hell. But I had to be there for her as a father and help her rebuild her life, especially as I haven't been in the past. Am I the asshole? Not the asshole. In principle, could you have just hung out with your stepdaughter and then moved your uh, daddy-daughter date with your daughter to the next day or something like that? Yeah, like in principle, you probably could have done that. However, I would say that there's like a few exceptions in life where like... You know, you kind of, one social gathering, like, takes precedent over another one. One would be, when your daughter gets out of prison, I think that you could be like, hey, Abby, maybe we could, like, do something a little later. My daughter just got out of prison. Like, for six months, she was incarcerated, so we're just gonna, like, she really needs to spend some time with, like, her father right now. Um... Just for a night, and we can just go get ice cream tomorrow or something like that. Don't care, didn't ask, plus she's a felon. <laughs> um, yeah, so, like, my interpretation is, I think, very similar to chats on this one. Um, which is, the stepdaughter can be mad, she's 12. So you get mad at everything, man. Um, the mom has an obligation to be the electrical resistor on that circuit. And look at the situation, not emotionlessly, but, but from a, a, a bird's eye view of the situation and be like, is it okay that my daughter's upset? Yes. Does that mean that my husband was out of line spending, you know, a couple hours with his daughter who just got released from prison? No. So you just take the heat, <laughs> basically. And then the next day, they wake up and they're probably fine. Or like, you know, a couple days or something like that. Um, you, sometimes you just, you, you know, you just got to basically eat someone else's emotions and, and soak them all up. Because, you know, you, people get frustrated with one another for unfair things. So overall, um, I mean, it's not the asshole. There doesn't have to be an asshole. If there is an, ath an asshole, then... I think, I think his wife was kind of an asshole here, but anyway. Um, I, I do want to read the You're the Assholes. She got out of prison, man. She got, <laughs> it's a big deal. Bro, just let her watch Netflix tonight. Take my daughter, our stepdaughter out for ice cream instead. 
Like she was in prison. Orange jumpsuit. You got a, one friend and it's a mouse. You keep it in like a little jar. Then there's like an asshole prison guard who he kills your mouse and you go, Aah! you know what I'm talking about? Brooks was here. Michael Clark Duncan. You know what I'm talking about? There's two different movies, but <laughs> one of them is The Green Mile. The other one's The Shawshank Redemption. You know, she was just in prison for six months. You know, the warden, he's cooking the books so he can lie in his own pockets while making the inmates uh, live in decrepit conditions. There's a huge man named John Coffey there who might have some connection to the other side. You know what I mean? He might be able to talk to dead people or something like that. I can't remember. I haven't seen it in about, you know, 20 years. You know, Rita, you got posters of Rita Hayworth. You're using a little spoon to dig out the, 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 the cement every night. You're crawling through a mile of shit. Anyway, I am waiting for, I'm waiting for info. What was she in prison for? <clears throat> Not the asshole. This is a one-off. Yeah, okay. We don't even need to read this. This is like, that's just, you're too smart. Not the asshole. People in the comments are acting like she's six, six instead of 12. She's all sixes and sevens, Basil. Not the asshole. People don't get released from prison every day. It was a one-off thing. Yeah, man. The, not the asshole. A bot. Oh, here we go. This guy is Sam Elliott at the bar. A boss once told me you can get away with anything if you do it right. You're not an asshole for what you did, but you're an asshole for how you did it. You treated a 12-year-old like an adult who understands complex relationships in history. Okay, sure, yeah. You owe your wife and the girl a sincere apology, not for what you did, but how you handled it? Okay. You owe the girl an apology. You do not own your, your, owe your fully grown wife an apology. What you owe her is an explanation that's like, hey, I understand that Abby's upset, but my daughter got released from fucking jail. Maybe you could cut me some slack. <laughs> she got released from prison. This wasn't like she was like, let's hang out tonight. You know, I'm free. She was like, let's hang out tonight. I'm free. Holy shit, not the asshole. Yeah, 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 yeah. Not the asshole. Not the asshole. No assholes, but you did the screw up. Mm. I believe that OP was not the one who was incarcerated. Info. Did you know she was being released that day? Was she released earlier or later than schedule? Exactly right. OP says they wrote letters and he visited. Daughter would have known her release date. She probably knew the day she went to prison since it was a six-month sentence. Even if the release date was moved up, they tell you. He could have moved the day with stepdaughter or told daughter, I have plans. See you tomorrow. I thought this was like the end of the comment. Like, dude, so it, like honestly, I, this is not like I don't disagree. But it's just like sometimes people like, they make mistakes, you know? Like, your whole... If your whole purpose in life was just to be a, a meat computer that handles this one interaction as best as possible, you could dedicate 16 hours a day to, to making sure that nobody got offended by this, you have no problem. But sometimes people, you know, sometimes you're like, hey, I'll take the garbage down. And then like 12 hours later, the garbage is still there. And, you know, you don't respond to that with like, you know, why did you lie? You respond to that with like, oh, sorry, I got distracted doing a bunch of other shit. <laughs> Sorry, I had a bunch of other stuff going on. I'll do it right now, you know? Like, so, yeah, maybe he knew the date in advance, but, you know, he's probably got other stuff on the go. You were wrong for how you did it. It's not like you got a phone. Okay, okay I, sure, all right. You're not wrong. I just disagree with the severity. Am I the asshole for turning my husband's office into a library for myself without telling him and refusing to give it back? I always think, they, let me, let me hydrate here. I always think about like, um, you remember, I've told this story before in seventh grade. My teacher told me, um, well, she told our class that 
at the end of the day, we would play Mind Trap, which are like brain teasers that you pull out of a, you know, hey, you're trapped in a room with three light switches and three, and uh, on the other side of the room is three light bulbs. How, with two switch flips, how could you figure out which one did what, you know? Um, and you, you turn one on, you turn another one on for five minutes, then you turn it off, you leave the other one off, you see what light is on, the two lights are off, then you feel them to feel out which one is warm. Oh, <laughs> right? Anyway, um, she told us we would do mind trap at the end of the day. We ran out of time. My friend got into an argument with her for like 40 minutes, which is the teacher should have known we got to stop this. But you also, it's not like you get a notification that's like, we're about to start a 40 minute argument. Like, are you, you sure you want to do this? Like it just, it starts of like, you know, one second and then it just blossoms and you're like, it's too, by the time you know you're in it, it's too late. It's quicksand, right? Yeah, this is the one where, you know, the, he was like a Reddit comment. He was like, you said we would play Mind Trap. At the end of the day, we're not playing Mind Trap right now. My parents told me not to respect liars, and you lied. Your, your move. Your move. You're the asshole. And it's like, you know, it's just if, then, but they, there's no, like, tolerance built in for, like, sometimes shit happens. You know, what if, like, an earthquake hit the school? Oh, we all got to evacuate. You told me we'd play Mind Trap, you, you liar. Anyway, it's just that I, I get that. <laughs> I get a... I get a lot of that uh, energy from Reddit from time to time. <clears throat> Am I the asshole for turning my husband's office into a library for myself without telling him and refusing to give it back? I separated from my husband about three years ago. He moved abroad, and I stayed in our marital home. Three years is a long time. I never thought we would reconcile, so after the first year, I redecorated his office and turned it into a library for myself. We started talking again in the last seven months, decided to reconcile. He moved back home this week, and he was upset I had taken over his office without warning since he needs it more than I need a library. He's especially upset since there were other rooms in the house that I could have used, but I could have, I picked his office because it had the perfect view and layout. Plus, I never thought he was going to come back anyway, so it wasn't like I ever thought he would need it again. He thinks I was trying to erase him from the house, and I could have told him before I did it since it was still his house despite us living separately. Info. I'm already in, like, info territory here. My husband wants his office back, Carlito wants his hand back, and wants me to take another room as a library, but I feel like it would be easier for him to pick another room and start fresh. The reason he wants the office back is because it's the perfect location for him not to be disturbed by noises from the rest of the house. And he had this room specifically designed to be his office when he first moved in. He's upset at me because I don't want to move my library to a different room. You are not going to make it. NGMI. It's not this. Come on. First off, do you live in the Overlook Hotel? How many rooms you got? There's so many other. It, it, you, this is not relatable, okay? Like, there's so many other rooms in our house, but I don't want to move my library. Like, it's not even a bathroom. Like, just to have a library is a luxury to begin with. But then to be like, I don't want to move my library because it has the perfect view. Like, it's, it's just, you're, you're already not relatable, okay? I'm not trying to make this about me. This is Reddit or Move. I streamed from what was literally supposed to be like the closet you put your shoes in for six years, something like that. Got, the, the thermometer in my office was like regularly breaking 30 degrees Celsius. I was sweating through all my clothes, taking two showers a day, and you won't move your library? It just seems like a little bit silly to me considering that you you know you're trying to like form a life together either way i we, back when i lived in the poison factory <laughs> um there's there's info i'm surprised that we're not looking at a lot of info requests here okay because if you both own the house if you're 50 50 on the house I don't want to necessarily turn this into a legal thing, but he has a right to pick his office. Maybe if it was your office, you, he, he wouldn't have a position to be like, you got to move your office to put my office there. But the library, that's like, it's got to go. 
Like the, the library is just a lower priority. Three, he maintained the house. She maintained the house for three years on her own. Well, yeah, but like, I also want to see the mortgage statement. Like, just, just because someone doesn't live in a place for three years, if they're still knocking out the mortgage payment, like, that still matters. It's not like they lost ownership of the house, as long as the checks were still clearing. Still matters. That's what I'm saying is also not relatable. Like, who can afford to, like, have a house and not live in it for three years? Like, I don't know, some people, but it's a lot. I don't know. Like, I'm, I'm like, isn't everybody sucks here, I guess, is where I'm coming at this from. I think she should give the library to her husband to work as his office because the office takes precedence over a library. I also think that uh, he should just be in a different office because it seems like a real pain in the ass to have to, like, remodel the house to move the library to another room. Can you find something you agree on? Like, do, do you guys eat separate dinners or something like that? I'm, it's just... It's just a... It, it, it's just bizarre. Some of these other ones are like, you know, am I the asshole for, like, shooting my attacker in self-defense? And this one's like, I don't want to move my library. It has the perfect view. But my husband doesn't want to have his office elsewhere because the noises from the rest of the state will bleed into his, you know, perfect hermetically sealed environment. It's just weird, man. I don't, I don't, I don't know what this. I'm just going with everybody sucks here. He expected you to have an office ready for him for three years. Are you sure you want him back? Look, this, this is a very Samantha thing to say. Everybody sucks here. Don't remarry your ex. Not the asshole. What an excellent reconciliation. Sar sarcasm detected and challenge accepted. He left for three years and then moved back to immediately start complaining you were erasing him and is upset with you for not warning him that you took over the office. Exactly why, TF, are you getting back together? Is that like the number one deal breaker for people? Is like, you, you know, they're surprised you like remodeled? Yeah, I, you know what? This is, I want to write a reply here that says, honestly, like, I just don't care. Your problems are not real. <laughs> don't get me wrong. They're real to you. Everybody's problems are real to them, but your problem is not real to anybody else. Come on. Just set, bro, just set up like a folding desk in like, you know, the utility room or something like that. You can make it work. This is not a, this is not a real problem. Everybody sucks here. Can you not compromise? Yeah, can you like not just can you not just put a desk in the library and then wait, well, you, you know what? You know what's going on here. She's got that thing decked out with like more plants than the Amazon rainforest. He's supposed to have clients over. They got to step between like palm fronds and ferns and stuff like that. You know, they got one of those bookshelves that has like the long-haired plants that are like hanging over the front of it. People are going to come over and be like, I don't think I want you to handle my accounts. You know it's happening. It's, there's no room for him to put his three-foot diameter globe that opens up and it has like the cheapest scotch money can buy inside of it. This is the way he seals the deal. I, I can understand it when you put it that way. Now it, I, I completely get it. it. Makes a lot of sense. I do want to know more about the, the home, though. Like, if he owns 50% of the house, I still think he should get a say in the office. <laughs> like, it's a weird situation to buy a home as a married couple, separate but not divorce, I think, and then be weird about the rooms when you come back. Like, you gotta come to a compromise. It's just a, it's an unusual situation. It's just, it's just strange, okay? Everybody sucks here. But yeah, we, I don't care about your problems anymore. Let's move on. <laughs> <clears throat> Am I the asshole for using my savings to pay off my parents' mortgage and car? How does this become, I am the asshole? 
There, there must be a, a very a, a dirty bomb hidden somewhere in the prose here. Oh, my wife originally said fine. All right, I can tell where this is going. I put away a little bit of money from every paycheck since I was a kid. I used most of it, $77,000, to pay off all my parents' bills that they were committed to make monthly payments towards, which included their mortgage in my mom's car, just to help them out, because my father got in a pretty serious accident. He might not be able to go back to work, at least not anytime soon. So someone had to do it, and I figured it was my responsibility. My wife said I didn't know them anything, and they hadn't asked for help, so it didn't make sense to help them. But my dad would never accept outside help. He'd rather skate by on Social Security than do that. It's like if someone who can't swim jumped into the pool, and you see them start to sink. Are you going to wait for them to ask you before it's too late? You leave, leave the metaphors to me, buddy, okay? You just dropped the facts out here. I'll come up with the analogies, all right? My wife originally said, fine, I'm not hungry anyway. But I guess she didn't mean it, because now she's saying that I did the wrong thing. Basically, every penny I gave my mom was made while my parents were letting me live with them. Over 80% of it was made then. We opened a savings retirement account 13 years ago together when we got married and have been putting money in there since. This is not from that. Okay, I mean... Like... It's... <laughs> you're not the asshole for using your money to help your parents out and you're you're kind of an asshole i don't know it depends on how the situation like went down right if you talked about it and she went yeah that sounds good you have a great case for that it's your money that you know you earned before we had even met each other essentially you're still contributing to our joint accounts then no problem but if if she originally went fine and then you did it. You got to read between the lines on that one. That's more of like an everybody sucks here. But, I mean, this is like a not the asshole situation, I think. He did a nice thing. The reasoning for him being an asshole is that that money could have gone to build a life like with his wife together. That's true. You know, money that you spend on A could also be used on B. But at the same time, like... You know, this is not money that they made together. It's his money. He helped his parents out of, like, a serious jam. It wasn't like he bought them a, a Maserati for no reason. Like, this, this is a not-the-asshole situation. That being said, 50% say he's the asshole. 42% say not the asshole. I, th I can understand, like, why... People would think he's an asshole. Everyone's people were like, oh, his wife's being greedy. Well, it's not necessarily greedy to be like, you could have put that $77,000 towards, you know, like accelerating our own financial life as a, as a couple instead, you know, like investments, down payment on a house, something like that, you know, in, instead of, it, it doesn't mean that she was just trying to, you know, blow it on something. You, there's good reasons to, to spend it in A. There's good reasons to spend it in B. We'll see what the comments say. You're the asshole. You're married. You don't suddenly drain your savings and drop 77K without your partner's agreement. Hey, hey. She said, fine. Now, she could have said, that sounds fine. Alternatively, <laughs> she could have said, fine, and then walked into a different room. And that changes the, the dynamic completely. I, challenge accepted, exactly. I mean, this, it's a complicated one. Mild, you're the asshole if you're married and have a family of your own. Spending your entire savings on your parents is kind of messed up. Like, I get wanting to help your family, but doing so at the expense of risking your, your own family security is dodgy. Your parents are grown-ups. They can handle their own problems. You're right to want to help, but if I was your wife, I'd be pissed if they dropped 77K to do it, too. After reading other comments and responses, you're the asshole big time. You have a kid, and you just mortgaged her future to keep your parents afloat, even though they have other options. Your dad can be too proud all he wants, but what he should have said is use that money for your daughter's education instead, and the only thing your mother should have discussed about this is how they can keep themselves above water without taking any of your life savings. Really, everybody sucks here except for your poor wife. Ah, the plot thickens. Kind of. 
The fact that OP as a kid isn't being mentioned merely enough? The comment confuses me. Doesn't OP specifically say his daughter's education fund was not touched? He only touched separate money from before they were married? He changed his story and apparently edited comments multiple times. Fortunately, he didn't edit them until he got a negative reaction, so other people saw it already. Yeah, at one point he responded to three or four things I said it once, maybe not realizing all the ones he's replying to were me and gave different answers in different threads justifying it. He's been changing things every time he responds and each clarification twists it more and more. At best, he commingled some money, but when he got married, brought what he's calling solely into their joint, his into their joint finances that his wife then managed for them overall. He then created new accounts. Is he going to prison? This is like a, a, a judgment. A college fund, joint retirement fund, some amalgamation of various ones where all the money seems to be together, but the whole thing was disorganized and mixed. And now he's trying to save face for messing up or he decided because he contributed most money. He's unilaterally allowed to change his mind since his wife is replaceable. All of this behind his dad's back when he didn't even have a need for sure at the moment. However, he did it results in his accountant wife, not asked for, by the way, realizing he either lied or improperly communicated things. Uh, okay, this adds so much context. <laughs> that... That's too much, okay? They, first off, they should not have this much information about this man's life, okay? However, is, does it say something about me that I feel like this guy is in way more hot water now that I know that his wife's an accountant? Like, I feel like that's like if you're married to a cardiologist and you were sneaking butterfingers on the side. Like, to be married to an accountant and then be like, oh, by the way, that's $77,000 in my savings account, I gave it to my parents. Like, I feel like you're... I thought, that's why I said leave the metaphor to me. <laughs> you're the asshole. Of course you're the arsehole. When you marry someone, you join together. That's what marriage is. Big financial decisions like this need to be joint decisions. Yeah, um, she said fine. Maybe she said, that's a fine. Like, if you do that, that's a fine. Like, I'm going to garnish your allowance for the next 10 years as a result of that. Maybe he misinterpreted. Anyway, I don't know. I, I'm surprised. I kind of like... I'm, I'm more in the middle on Reddit, but I don't think I'm fully on chat's side. Like, it is... I mean, marriage is weird, right? Like, kind of. When you are married, you can split your finances. You can have your money, our money, your spouse's money. But it's kind of like a, at least I think in North America, it's, it's kind of like a wink and a nudge in the eyes of the law. Because I'm pretty sure all assets accrued since marriage are de, de facto considered 50-50 owned by each spouse. So it's kind of like, you know... We keep everything separate in the eyes of the law. If it ever came to that, you pretty much just King Solomon it. But I, her, me, her, her, me. <laughs> but I don't know how that applies to $77,000 that was accrued before you got married. But also, I feel like once you start having to have a legal uh, discussion about this with your spouse, you're heading down a, 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 a strange road. Like, once you start to consider the, you know, maybe suing your wife or husband, it's an interesting situation. But anyway, um, am I the asshole for asking this guy that I'm seeing to pick up the tab since he makes so much more than me? User was cyberbullied for this post. No question about it. Please. It's been removed. I was I was so ready, man. <laughs> I was so ready. <laughs> I'm not I'm not gonna go to redacted. No, it's okay. I, I respect the it's the right to be forgotten. Okay, Re redacted. I know we we got like half an hour left here. I'm kind of I'm looking for some. I'm looking for some juicy ones, man. I'm looking for some juicy ones. 
Am I the asshole for making my stepdaughter be less friendly with my daughter? Not the asshole. I sleep. Am I the asshole for changing my baby's name despite promising my dead husband's family I'd name the child after him? Ho! Jackpot. <clears throat> not jackpot. Not, not, not jackpot. Am I the asshole for getting only one of my twin sons a phone? I have twin sons. Twelve. Let's call them Bob and Joe for simplicity's sake. Who are in seventh grade. Back when they were at the end of fifth grade, my wife and I were planning to get them both phones over the summer as they would be starting sixth grade next year. The f that's the phone year, as we know. Uh, unfortunately, COVID hit. Now that they'd be home all day, we saw no reason to give them phones as they already had cellular iPad minis and were going to get laptops for school. Flash forward to this school year, my sons are both going to middle school after doing sixth grade virtually. They reminded us we were going to get them phones once their school restarted, but my wife recently lost her job and found a much lower paying one, so we were trying to get our finances back on track. They haven't been doing so well this year. Last quarter, they brought home report cards with B's, C's, and F's. Info, what were the F's in? If they were in gym, big whoop. If it's in art, big whoop. Short stories, how'd they do in novellas, though? Uh, so they're not doing so well. I was a bit disappointed. I told them I didn't want to reward them with phones for a report card like that, and I would need A's or B's for a phone. They also haven't been doing so... Wait, that's the same. I told them I would work with them and get them a tutor, but they also needed to work, too. Look at this smiling baby. Hello. Hello. Hi. Oh, hello, baby. How did my baby do today? Uh, little bit cried. Oh. Little cried a bit, a lot cried. Oh. Cried a bit of cry, but she she met a friend. Oh. And then, uh, the friend, he was very nice. Apparently, he has a seven-month-old baby sister. Oh, nice. So the friend <laughs> was. Very nice to her. Hey. How did mommy do today? Mommy, mommy panicking. Mommy sweating. Oh, no. Mommy, my, my, underneath my mask, it was just like sweat. Just like <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we started her in, in daycare. So there's like a little adjustment period where we kind of like, you know, she's supervised by Kate at the daycare. It's going to be a, you know, it's going to be an adjustment. Just take my, some time. My arms are noodles. Yeah, I bet you held her like all day. I did. Oops. Okay, honey. Can we can we do some tricks? Excuse me, Tomo. <laughs> okay. Uh, hooray! Hooray! Uh, Baksu. Great hey. job, honey. Uh, Peekaboo. Peekaboo! Oh, she was smiling so much. Did you? Peekaboo! 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 She's like, ah, where's your nose? Yeah, you got it. Where's your hair? Right there. Yeah, I think I, there you go. <laughs> She's so good. Is there more tricks? Um, can Milk. you? No. Milk. Where? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know if, if you should have taught her that one. I'm a teacher. Where's, you. where's me? Yeah, that's you. And that's me. <laughs> um, blow a kiss? Still working on that one. Still working on blow a kiss. You want to give kiss to Dada? Or do you want to give kiss to Mama? <laughs> Mama? Mama? She looks happy. She, 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 she looks sly, too. She She's was, like... She was, like, crying the whole time. <laughs> you want to kiss Mommy? Kiss? Mm, yeah. Good girl. I've been trying to teach her how to give a hug, but when I say hug, she dances. She goes like... <laughs> Hug? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, dude. Maybe, maybe I was dancing when I said uh, 
Can I have a hug? And then she like imprinted on it. Can I have a hug? <laughs> Mom. Mom. Ow. Ow. Did you have a good time? Bravo. Bravo. Hi. Hi. She ate quite a lot in daycare though. Yo, she had a sick bento. Oh no. She didn't have the bento. But she ate the food that the daycare lady gave Oh, okay. Her. Bread Ay. and some eggs. Ay. <laughs> Ay. Eggs. Uh oh. <laughs> what a nice baby. Okay. Bye bye. See you later, honey. Bye bye. I'm glad she did okay at the. At the daycare. You know, it's a big day for a kid. Go meet some, uh, some peers. Be taken care of by a, an adult who's essentially like a stranger to you. Anyway, getting back to, uh, yeah, insulting these parents. <laughs> mm, I told them I would work with them and get them a tutor, but they also had to work, had to. Mm, I see where they get it from. A typo? Not on my watch. They had this quarter to work and earn their phone. I reminded them that if one of them ended up getting the grades required and the other one didn't, I would only be buying a phone for the one who got the grades. Over the next two weeks, I began to see major improvement from both Bob and Joe. However, as a few more weeks went by, I could see Bob slacking off. My wife and I kept trying to get him motivated, but he just didn't try. Flash forward to last week, and I got the report cards back. Joe's been working like a machine for the past quarter, and it really showed. He got all A's, not one B. Bob, on the other hand, slipped back into the B and C range. I was tracking their progress on my phone throughout the quarter, and during the last week, I went out and brought, bought Joe's iPhone 12 and kept it until that day. I knew at this point there was no way for Bob to catch up. There were no quizzes scheduled for the week, but I went and bought a pair of AirPods for him after calling and asking my wife if it was okay with her. What's he going to use the AirPods with, his cellular iPad mini? Come on, man. He's he's gonna be he's gonna be laughed at. Cause you got those plugged into your your iPod Mini that doesn't have access to to. Oh wait, the the cellular one. That's the good one, right? Wi-Fi only is the. That's the the cheap iPad. Well, the cheaper iPad, also known as the one we have, because I've never seen our iPad leave our our home. Um, I think I may be the ass... Oh, hold on. It's been a week since then, and Bob has barely said a word to me, my wife, or Joe. So a week is a long time in the world of a 12-year-old. I don't want Bob to feel as we chose Joe over him, so I'm considering buying him the phone to make him feel better, but my wife thinks since we gave them both the same choice, it was fair. I think I may be the asshole as this has driven a rift through the family, Bob on one side and the rest of us on the other. So am I the asshole? Edit, to everyone saying the phone is out of our budget, we had more than enough to buy the phone on contract, so that part wasn't a big deal. O update, okay, so this was all a joke. Apparently, I talked to Bob and was about to start apologizing when, hold, what, he told me it was all a joke. I figured this was him just being defensive, but he seemed pretty insistent on it. I got my wife and Joe in the room, and apparently this was all a stupid joke they cooked up. I don't know whether to be mad at them or relieved that Bob at least has a bright future in acting. Your wife was in on it? So your, either your kid said to your wife, hey, you know what would be a great prank on our dad is to make me think I hate him and all of you? Or your wife came up with it and was like, it'd be really funny if you'd gaslit your father into thinking that he ruined our family. Uh, and then she was like, yeah, that's a good idea. For a week, for, for even for an hour, that's kind of fucked up to just play with someone's emotions like that. Um, but for a week, like you, you probably ruined a week of this man's life. Just for for what? Well, dude, you should have seen your face. It was so funny when you thought your son would never talk to you again. It was so funny when you when you thought 
that uh, you had completely torpedoed one twin's relationship with his other twin over an iPhone 12? The only... <laughs> Look, the only thing I can say here is... I, yes, that maybe this is a, a face-saving move, okay? Maybe this is a situation where the, the mom talked to the kid and was like, knock that out. And the kid was like, let's pretend it was all just a laugh and we'll just build the future of our family on a foundation of lies. I, th believe it or not, that's the good outcome here. Because if it was actually a joke, like from the inception, you have to send your wife to counseling, like immediately. She needs to know that, that would you ever feel secure and trusting in your relationship ever again, knowing that at any point your emotions could be responsible? The only reason you're feeling these emotions is because she wants to prank you for like a week or more. It's just bizarre, man. Anyway, let's assume that we're not reading the update because I think it was more cut and dry then. I don't know. This is like the classic, it's the, the, the classic parental dilemma, right? You want to incentivize your child to do something, usually something good, do better in school, do your chores, whatever. Um, you threaten a punishment. If they don't do it, they don't do it. Now, what do you do? Hot shot. You know, are you going to, are you going to stick to your principles, even though you know, it's going to upset them? Maybe fuck your life up for a bit. Uh, or are you going to relent, give them the thing they wanted anyway, and then maybe teach them the lesson that they never have to ever follow through on a promise because of the fact that they uh, can just cry and then get what they wanted? You know, it's, it's an uncomfortable position to be in. That's tough. I don't, I don't know. I, I feel like, well, here's the thing, okay? I hate to become like a lawyer. I need A's and B's for a phone, okay? Can I get that written up, like in a tort law context? There's no question, Joe should get a phone. If you wanted to be the worst parent on earth, you say, Joe, sorry, I can't get you a phone because Bob got one C. That is how you end up not having a relationship with your children after they leave home. You'll never talk to them again. <laughs> it would be kind of funny if it happened on a TV show or something like that, but in real life, it's over the line. And they'll hate each other, for sure. Um, that's a, a, ancillary, though. Uh, ancillary, sorry. It's one of those words I've been mispronouncing forever. Um, Joe did well, deserves a phone. Bob, it's, look, I, I don't know where I would come down on this one. I was going to say, can you get Bob like, a, like, a, like an LG chocolate or something like that? Uh, and then put parental controls on it so like all he can use it for is to like phone home and <laughs> like I kind of feel like maybe this is not a popular opinion or maybe it is but I feel like you want your kid to have a cell phone that you don't want them to necessarily have access to like you know Robin Hood but you want your kid to be able to phone you if they get into trouble or, I don't know, phone the police or something like that, phone their school. Um, yeah, you want your kid to have at least some kind of connectivity, right? Um, so I think you got to give them, I think you got to give them an LG chocolate, man. I think it's the, on, the only way. And then if he gets one, <laughs> one quarter of a better performance on his report card, then you can upgrade him to that. Uh, you can upgrade him to the iPhone 12. iPhone 12 rose gold plus with a 4K screen. And the AirPod Pros. I don't like being this guy, okay? Because, like, I, it takes something like this to get me to be this guy. But you can't be... It, it harms your case to be like, we had money problems, so we didn't get him phones. My son didn't fulfill his end of the bargain, so instead of getting him an iPhone 12, I got him AirPods. It's just, 
it, I'm not telling them they can't spend their money like that. And clearly their financial situation has changed over the course of the past year. I'm just saying it, you could get cheaper. I'm not saying AirPods are bad or they're not worth it, but you, he's a 12 year old kid. Do you know how many AirPods I would have lost at age 12? They don't have cords. They don't, I, I, they'd be dropping out of my ears all the time, man. You're chewing gum, jaw muscle pops an AirPod out, goes right down the sewer grate. You go, eh, I want my AirPod back. All of a sudden, you know, you're getting abducted by Pennywise the Clown. I guess they could just buy more. <laughs> Gripsy. <laughs> okay, okay. We all drip down here, Bob. Wicked, by the way. Wicked, yeah, babe. Wicked mouth, yeah, babe. <clears throat> Am I the asshole for taking my girlfriend home early from a party? Hold on. I'm just... Just looking. Just looking. R <laughs> Risters. <laughs> Holy crap. You want to know, like, as you get older, why you're, like, less interested in going out to parties and getting hammered? Thursday night at 8.30, a text rolls in. Hey, you want to come over tomorrow? It's going to be fun. Saturday morning, 11 a.m. Holy bird. <laughs> And then I can't believe that she would. And then I was, uh, and then I, I just wanted to take a seat on the couch. Oh, but just because you've had 17 McClays, all of a sudden I can't sit on the couch. You want to fucking fight with me? What's your problem? And then I wanted to eat the last slice of pizza, but I couldn't eat the last slice of pizza because the fridge was getting blocked by people standing next to the keg all night. And me, 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 her, her, me, her, her, me. Okay, this, this might be our last one. Let's go. Let's go. Hey, Reddit, what's going on? What's going on? Hey, guys, what's going on? I'm in a little bit of a jam, not clickbait. So a few nights ago, me, 22F, 22M, and my partner, 19F, went to my school friend's house for a party. We've been dating for two weeks and have known each other for about six months. There, I... Everybody, chill. But I think there should be a rule. You can't bring your relationship problem to Reddit when you've been dating for two weeks. It's just not enough... You, like, you, you need to at least cross, I'm going to say three months, then you reach a point where, like, the government has figured out that this is not an anti-money laundering situation, like, you're an actual couple, now we can start to work from the position that you guys are building something together, not just, like, I mean, that two, two weeks ago, that, that was, like, I don't even know, that was, like, Thanksgiving. Canadian Thanksgiving. Any, sorry, sorry. So, you, so you've been boyfriend and girlfriend for two social occasions now. Uh, her, her father has been a little suspect of me as I am three years older, which I totally understand because it played on my mind too before I asked her out, but she's just amazing in all ways. And I can't imagine myself with somebody else. Look, I'm getting too into this. I bet it's not always. She's 19 years old. You're telling me she can parallel park on a busy downtown street at rush hour? She's amazing in all ways. She's 19. You ever see her do her taxes? I'm just, I'm just saying. Anyway, the other, just don't lie. That's all I'm asking, okay? Just don't lie. Anyway, the other night I took her to my mate's place for a party as I wanted to introduce her to all my school friends. She checked with her old man... And he said, yes, as long as she's back by 10 p.m., another consideration is that she doesn't drive. Well, well, well. What did I tell you? <laughs> I can spot him a mile away. I said, yep, no problem. And she agreed, too. On the way to the party, she tells me, just ignore her dad. Have a few drinks and then drive me home in the morning. I protested and said, no, I want to earn her old man's trust and show him respect. You know, maybe start just calling him her dad instead of old man every time would be nice. Um, this hurt as I wanted nothing more than to spend the night together, but felt it was right. 
On the way to the party, she's okay, yeah. So 9.30 rolls around. I say to her, let's go. I don't want to be late. I then turn to a mate and say, leave that whiskey for me. I got some catching up to do when I get back. She, <laughs> 20, 22 year olds uh, version of what being a classy older gentleman is like. Save that whiskey. In, in, in their head, save that whiskey for me. I'll have some catching up to do when I get back. Me observing it as a 32 year old. Save that whiskey for me. I'll have some catching up to do when I get back. <clears throat> she protests, saying she's having a really good time. She doesn't want to go. Keep it civil. And eventually she agrees and we leave. In the car, I explain to her my stance and reinforce how much I don't want to do this. She's just quiet. When I get back to her place and open the door, her father answers and says, thank you. And what you've done means a lot. I say too easy and accept his handshake. <laughs> he said too, too easy. It's so, by the way, I'm on this guy's side right now. It's just really funny. Too easy. Yeah, too easy. Why don't you make it 7 p.m. next time? And then I swear to God, her old man turned to me and said, challenge accepted. <clears throat> My partner is still annoyed, hinting that she thinks this isn't going to work. I don't want this to be over. She is amazing in every way. Maybe not behind the wheel. Uh, and I understand that what I did was sexist as I was putting the wants of her, the father over her. And I do not want him to stop me from seeing her as he didn't trust me. So Reddit, am I the asshole? Not sexist, I think. I would not go that far. Sexism is not when you have a disagreement with your partner who is a woman. Just a quick edit. Wow, a cheers for your input. Also, one thing I want to add. Oh, cheers for all your input, guys. Little sexist. Now, now you're losing me, Jeff Probst. However, you are on Reddit. So statistically speaking, this is probably largely accurate. As a result, I'm going to say we're moving on. Also want to add, I made it clear when we were discussing this, this was only a one, maybe two time thing as I want her dad to trust me, not worry about his daughter when we're out together. And she didn't get shouted out when we got home so that we can spend more nights out together. This will not be occurring in the future. And I did not get any joy whatsoever from doing this. It's the polar opposite of what I personally wanted to do. Duh. Uh, I just did what I felt was right so we can continue seeing each other. All's good in the world. Just got off the phone from her and her old man. Her old man again thanked me. Then told me he will no longer be imposing any restrictions to us going out. Yay. And that apologized for putting me in a hard situation. He was just very wary of the age gap. He then left the room, or at least I hope he did. Ha ha. This is all just very normal right now. Like, this is not that... It's not that crazy. The better half, you, oh, look, man, you've been dating for two weeks. You can't be calling her your better half already. That's like a, that's like a married for five years sort of thing, or maybe like 25 years. <laughs> the better half then popped on. Said she understood my reasoning and that he, her dad, told her after I dropped her off that if I didn't bring her back, he would have forced her to break up with me. After reflection from the post here, I apologize for heading back to the party, which she responded with, why shouldn't you enjoy yourself because my dad's a downer? What an asshole, man. Bring, <laughs> can you bring my 19-year-old daughter back by 10? Then also, what, like such a disciplinarian, he then called me back and said, sorry for putting you in a tough spot. I was just concerned about my child. Fucking... Dickhead. Yes, sir. Sir, yes, sir. I'll have your daughter back by 10 p.m. Sir, yeah. We then had a laugh and made plans for tonight. No curfew in sight. Edit number three. Thanks, guys, for your input. We broke up. <laughs> However, I've seen a few people placing my girlfriend into an asshole category, which I think is a little unfair. Hey, you guys, thanks for your input. Thanks for all your support, guys. But listen, some of you <laughs> been calling... My better half an asshole. <clears throat> I'm more than happy to accept I was somewhat of an ass. And so was the father. Yeah, in absolutely no way whatsoever. Really, were either of you the asshole at all. Maybe you shouldn't have gone back to the party, but I think you probably should have. But, like, did, no, you didn't... Neither... No one involved really did anything wrong at all. However, my girlfriend is an awesome, kind person who just wanted to spend time with me. In no way would she want to cause an argument with her old man over this because she doesn't like conflict. She's just one of those people that doesn't like conflict. You know, she's drama-free. She's my better half. She's good at everything except parking. Please be understanding that she is from a strict household. <laughs> sir. sir, yes, sir, sir. 
which makes it incredibly tough to stand up for herself. She is no asshole, sir. I will defend her honor as is necessary. It all worked out fine. And look at all this is like emblematic of so much young adult drama. And I, I, you know, I had my own dose of it for sure. But it was like all this shit. Look at this. Look at the wasted time. Dozens of man hours, like reading comments, replying comments, like just sapping the productivity of the Reddit using world. And then it's like we had a conversation on the phone. Everything's fine. The end, you know? Sorry I wrote two essays. Like it's just. <laughs> It's just okay, man. It's not, there's no problem. Anyway, that's React Chord for this week. That was, it's good stuff. It's good stuff.